Well, I have a song I sing when I go into a classroom with children. I say, hello, cousins. They're a little surprised. Uh, I said, well, not first cousins. That way you had a same grandparent. Not even second or third cousins. But look what happens. Two times two is four. Two times four is eight. Two times eight is sixteen. And the hour is getting late. We've all been a doubling, a doubling, a doubling, all been a doubling in 32 years. Every 32 years, the rural population tends to double. Mm. By 16 is 32, next comes 64, next comes 128. We need to hear all the we all been a doubling, a doubling, a doubling. And the kids find it fun to sing. Next comes the next comes 256, next 512. Next to 1,024. Figure it out yourself. We've all been a doubling, a doubling, a doubling, all been a doubling in 32 years. Double 10 more times, we had ancestors over a million. Double another 20 times, we had ancestors over a trillion. Now hold on, there never were a trillion people in the world, at least not yet. And that means that some of our ancestors must have married cousins. And you and I and everybody in the world, no matter the color of our skin or the shape of our eyes, we're all cousins to each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we then we get thinking, what is going to happen in the future? What is going to happen? Because the Hudson Valley is doubling every 20 years. Yep. I argued with a politician here, but he's a nice man, and he's not with us anymore. But he said, John, uh, we should slow down. He said, Pete, if you don't grow, you die. I didn't know what to say, but at one o'clock in the morning, I sat up in bed and said, if it's true that if you don't grow, you die, doesn't it follow that the quicker we grow, the sooner we die? Hmm. And yeah. tell that to the next economist who says, oh, you must know or you die. And answer, yes or no. If that is true, and if you don't grow, you die. Doesn't it follow that the quicker we grow, the sooner we die? Yeah, it's true. You know, one uh, question I wanted to answer, uh, ask you, is about the words of the song, The House I Live In. Uh, uh, beautiful song. We uh, sang it over there. Yeah. Today? Uh, first, uh, uh, what are some of the questions we uh, ask about that song? The house uh, I live in, the plot of earth, the street, the grocery around, the books around, the people that I meet, meet. the church, yeah, the school, the clubhouse, the many, many lights I see. see. But especially the people that's America to, to me. Meet. Especially the people as I knew the man who wrote the melody, uh, Earl Robinson. He also wrote the ballad of Americans. Uh -huh. And he wrote, I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night with the music. Did he play a serious write the words to that? Huh? Did he write I see? No, sing? other people wrote the words and uh, of course I knew uh, uh, Earl Robinson very well. As, as a matter of fact, I got into theater partly because of him. And a big course. Huh? The People's Course. The People's Course. Well, there was a wonderful theater movement at that time. Well, there's lots of things at this time, too. Yeah, there are. No, what I'm reading there was a, oh yes, we have some progressive theater. But at that time, there was a wonderful theater movement. And, uh, like, uh, your theater part in the theater movement. The puppetry part. <laughs> Tell us about that part. <laughs> do you guys do you did puppets together? Do you guys ever do puppets well, together? Well, uh, I wrote an article in the puppetry journal about his wonderful contribution. His wonderful contribution to the to the uh, theater movement at the time. But it and it dealt with and it dealt with all the wonderful the. Uh, the problems that the people at that particular period were com uh, the co uh, the complex they were going for through. Tell them a little about that, about the t at the time that you got involved in the theater movement. And when was that? When, how long ago was that? 1939. Huh? 1939. Uh, in 
Uh, in Mexico, a man named Cardenas uh, managed to be become president, and he was an extraordinary president. He kept his sh mouth shut and done what is told, and he was appointed, literally, a president. Always, he just got appointed. Yeah, they had an election, but it was a, a, a foregone conclusion that they would get selected. And Cardenas appointed a banker to be head of the uh, Secretary of Commerce, but he appointed a communist to be Secretary of Education. And the Education Department sent up and got some big four-wheel drive vans and traveled down these bumpy little curved roads to villages that uh, didn't know what was going on. Catholic priest ran the village. Well, they set up a microphone and speakers in the public square. People had never seen a microphone in 1936. And my uh, two friends of mine uh, were painters, and they would paint a mural on the side of a building that maybe had a big roof over it so it didn't get washed off too soon. And they put paint pictures of all people in it. Pictures of famous people like uh, the 19th century president who was an Indian and a great, great president of the United Civil War. But my memory is gone. Johnson. Uh, Johnson? What? Johnson? Can't even hear you. Is it Johnson? 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 Oh, no. Way, way. No, before that. 1980s, 1860s, 1750s, 1670s. Anyway, no matter. But uh, these cultural power events, as they were called, uh, did wonderful things in that And when they left that little village a week later, uh, the local priest was no longer the one person in charge of the They came to New York and said, let's have a puppet show to tell New York State. It so happened that in New York State, the dairy farmers were only getting paid about two cents a quarter of the milk. And, uh, families were starving. I played the part not in the uh, in the puppet show. There was the stage up there and I was on the hook. And the farmer comes in and he starts milking. He says, I don't know what I'm going to do. My wife has left me and taken the kids. He says, I don't earn enough money to feed them. But what can you do when you only get paid two cents a quart for the milk? And the cow says, well, you're very foolish. You should get together with the other farmers and demand the better price. <laughs> the cow is the union organizer. <laughs> oh, okay. and, uh, That's great. That's great. So what do you how do you feel about like we have like what happened in Wisconsin? They're trying to dismantle they. They that own everything, the top one percent, want to dismantle the unions because well, the unions are costing the upper one percent money. How do you feel about that? You guys were here before unions were even here. Well, actually, we fought very, very hard for those unions. We broke our heads for them. Yeah. Because times were very bad. Our salaries were impossibly small and to cover. And we didn't, uh, we didn't get our uh, needs covered. I mean, we worked hard. Oh, by the way, I worked even WPA. When I got a WPA, the lowest salary was $14, and my salary, because I was finally trained to be a teacher, and working uh, a good many hours, uh, I was making $23.75 a week. Mm -hmm. And huh, that was really <laughs> big pay at that time. I actually, over seven years of, of working, Saved $300, and that's how I got to California.